What's going on YouTube? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Right now I'm standing in the section that's going to be the new food forest and I've got the wood chips down here. But to the left of me, I didn't finish getting the chips down yet, even though it's this late. But where I do have them down, they're nice and thick, just how I want them. I'm going to step down to show you how deep. And there you go. This morning was freezing. It was like 10 degrees, but now it's gotten really nice out. So I want to make sure I take advantage of this opportunity. I got to finish the fencing. I got some wood chips to put in, check on the chickens, do a lot more other things. Wanted to bring you guys along. Let's go. To give you guys an update of what we have done, that's all wood chip to the left there. All this grass here needs to be chipped. And we've got that side of the fence up. So I need to get this all chipped and get the rest of the fence up so I can move on to phase three, which is going to be really fun to bring to you guys. And I'm super excited to bring that one. That's going to be, I think, one of the most valuable ones. So let me get to chipping and get to working. I got Tuck with me out here today. Everyone was missing you, boy, asking where you were. It was too cold out though, huh? Yeah, sometimes it's just too cold out for this little guy. Got to get him a sweater or something, but he hates wearing them. But we'll have some fun together today. Moving some chips, playing around. Let's get working, Tucky. Originally, that wood chip mound started about here. And we moved all to, to there. So almost the whole thing done. There were a few huge stumps that they left in there, but that's all right. We got it for free. And that's one great thing about living in the suburban area. Local resources like this, like wood chips and leaves, people just throw them out and get rid of them. This is what you want though. Look, the needles, the leaves, the sticks, this fresh green, this is going to break down and feed the worms and the microbes immediately. That's what we want. I need to get this contractor's paper down first. So before I do that, I want to have a load of wood chips here. This way, as I unroll the contractor's paper, I can make sure I'm putting wood chips over top of it so I'm not fighting against the wind too much. And the reason we're putting this contractor's paper down is to help kill off the grass. We don't want to remove the grass or we don't want to really dig too much and hurt any of the microbes or anything to mess with the soil too much. Because if you look at it in nature, nature's not invasive with the way it tills or anything. I mean, you've got some little worms that till, like Masanobu Fukuoka says, and you've got roots that till, but you don't have any really invasive forms of tilling. So we don't want to be tilling. We want to copy nature and do what it does. So by using this contractor's paper, the ideal time to put it down is in the fall. Like September around here would be perfect. I'm in zone 6B. So to get this down in September would be ideal. Right before the rainy season and the cold season, you cover the grass and it'll help to suffocate the grass and keep any light from getting to the grass. The grass will die down and feed the microbes. This way through the fall and winter, because you have that thick insulation of the wood chips and because you have the grass, everything's going to be fed. Come spring, it should be perfect, ready to plant. But this is gonna be a little different because I didn't get the wood chips down in time. It's late into January now, so I gotta get it done. But I'm not gonna make any excuses. I didn't do it, but I'm gonna do it now. I wanna inspire you guys to do it. Even if it's late, even if you didn't have the time or you didn't know late in the fall, do it now. I need this contractor's paper to overlap. This way I don't have any weeds coming through. I don't want it like this or I'll have weeds coming through here. I want it overlap like this. And it's a good idea to have a board back here as a weight and you can just roll it out. And like I said, backfill with the wood chips over top as you go. So we'll just push these back and just start rolling. And I can even use some of these chips over here. But I did grab these fresh ones. The wind's not blowing this second, but one gust of wind and it'll take all this out. But look how easy this is. How much easier this is than trying to use cardboard or something to fit it in. That's why I love this contractor's paper. You have to pay for it, but I think it's worth it. I don't remember exactly how long it was since I put this contractor's paper down, but I got it down uh, when I did that video and then I just didn't have time to finish because it got through dark out. Then we had snow the next day, so it's held up pretty good actually. But it's ripped and teared in some spots. You can see when it's wet, how quickly it's gonna break down. By the time uh, spring comes, it'll be all gone, this contractor's paper. Even put it down this late into the winter. Here's a nice little tip. When you get to the end of the roll, have a nice uh, long flat piece of wood and just roll it over the top of it. Then cut it on top of that. It's gonna make it a lot easier. It can give you a nice straight cut too. Just if you can, make sure it's, the, it's longer than the length of your cardboard paper. Some of you guys have mentioned to me about moving the wood chips. You said, James, you're working way too hard not getting a tractor or something. But I'm on a pretty small property here. Uh, you know, I'm only on a third of acre of the whole total property. 
and the food forest behind me, that's only like 67 by 55 feet, so it's not huge. And the new area is only like 35 by like 45 or something like that around there. So it's not a huge area. So I actually enjoy moving the wood chips out. I like the, you know, the, the labor that comes along with it. It's all an experience for me. Moving the chips, getting the chips, yeah, moving them, planting the seeds, it's all part of it. So I love to do it and I want to change it. If I was on a lot bigger of a, a property or something, I definitely would get a tractor or something without a doubt. One thing to note though, if this is your first time doing it, you don't want to go more than two layers of uh, contractor's paper. Because when you come in here with the wheelbarrow and shake it, the dump, you'll rip up the ground if, you, if you've got uh, your wheel on top of the contractor's paper without enough uh, wood chips on top. So I'll show you guys how I do it. You can put some wood chips down in the front to get your wheel up and then throw it into the back. But like I said, you don't really want to go more than two deep. I like to go too deep and then cover it with chips on the backside and then move out. A number of you guys have mentioned in the comments a few suggestions on how to move wood chips easier and I really appreciate it. I love the comments and I read all of them. One of you guys said that I should try to tip the wheelbarrow up against the pile to try to do it like that and then, and then push it in and then bring it back. I've tried things like that but personally what works best for me, I'll show you guys my method and it has a lot to do with the tools. I've been moving wood chips for almost as long as I've been gardening, five or six years and on this property and it, and it comes down to the tools for me you can't go wrong here it starts with the pitch fork this is a five prong and you don't want just like a four prong you want it relatively tight this way if the wood chips are pretty small you can still pick them up and this is my favorite for up top and for doing a method where i pull them down i'll show you guys how i do that and my tool of choice the way i move all of them quick is this thing i'm not sure exactly what kind of shovel it is but it's really light it's aluminum i call it like an old coal shovel and the, this really is what moves the chips for me. For me, this whole experience is enjoyable. I love every part of it. You guys probably saw when I got the wood chips dropped off, I was so excited. And I love even the smell of them. Yeah, they smell amazing even now still. And I almost didn't even want to get rid of all of them because when I come out from the house and I leave or something, I could just smell them and it just reminds me, it's like uh, spring's on its way, spring's on its way, but I got to get working in. So what I like to do is take my pitchfork first and just bring some of the high ones down and this technique only really works if you're on concrete or if you're on hard ground. If possible, you want to dump your wood chips on concrete or blacktop, in my opinion. This way you can shovel them easier. But if you're going to put them somewhere long term, you want to put them on the grass. This way you can have all the worms and stuff come through. But temporary, short term, blacktop or concrete is the way to go. So after you pull some down, you usually don't have to pull much down. And I have to pull more down because it's a little frozen because it's been so cold here. So now that it's all pulled down, I'm going to bring the wheelbarrow over and then just show you guys how much you can pick up with a shovel like this. And since they're wood chips, they're so light, so you don't have to worry about like hurting your back or anything. And you shouldn't actually have to worry about hurting your back as long as you lift correctly, lifting with your legs. So you can see some of the, the size of shovel loads I can get with this. So with a shovel load like that, I only need about five shovel loads and I'm filling up the whole wheelbarrow, maybe four. So a nice tip for you guys is when you're using a wheelbarrow, put all the weight in the front. So the purpose of this wheelbarrow is to take the weight off of you. And the way that it does that is with the wheel. So anytime you have anything heavy, you want all that weight right in the front. This way you're not straining yourself. You're not carrying the weight when you're, when you're lifting it. It's all just stationed in the front there. All right, when we dump these chips, we wanna make sure we're not ripping up the contractor's paper or anything. We'll make a little path with the wood chips to get in the back. I'll show you here. I'll dump them right in the front here. This way I can get to the back and I'm not gonna rip the contractor's paper below it. Then I'll just have to pull back the wood chips a little bit, but it's gonna be easy because I just put them down. So I finished getting the wood chips down there. I'm gonna get the next row down, make sure I overlap again and just follow the same pattern, the same thing I did last time. This section here that I have wood chipped already, I didn't have to put contractor's paper down because I didn't have any grass growing. Only some spots I had some weeds and if I did have weeds, I put the contractor's paper down to combat that. This is so easy to do. I'll just continue right along. And then I make sure I'm uh, overlapping at least like four or five, maybe six inches. To overlap more is better than to not overlap enough, that's for sure. Look how easy this can be to start your own garden. Tuck loves it too. He loves running on this like paper and stuff whenever I put it down. Anything I'm messing with, he's got to get his paws on it.
I think they call that progress. Let's keep going though. We probably got one or two more strips right there. And then I can just finish wood chipping it. I got some wood chipping to do behind me. I've also got a heavy prude on this tree. I might just completely take it off or graft onto it. Not too sure yet, haven't decided. I think one of the reasons it's not producing is because that Bradford pear there. But that's coming out real soon. This is basically just the last little piece right here. I'm just gonna rake all the wood chips out so I know where the grass starts. Just had this last little section here to do. Now I'm actually remembering back and I actually did bury some of the grass just back here. I remember to phase one and I buried some of the grass because uh, I said I was gonna do it about 12 inches deep, about 12 or 14 or 16 inches to show you guys that you don't have to use contractor's paper. But if you don't use contractor's paper, you gotta put the wood chips really deep, which means if you're doing annuals, you're gonna have to pull back 12 inches of wood chips to plant. Someone like me, I don't mind, but if you put 12 to 14 inches down now like that, you're not gonna have to put it down for a long time. So do it all at once. Uh, that's kind of how I did it, but that's not how you have to do it. If you're just gonna plant annuals in a garden, I really would only do contractor's paper and four to six inches. It's really not worth putting this much down, but this is mainly gonna be a food forest. And I wanted to show you guys a few different ways with contractor's paper over here, without contractor's paper over here. And if you guys remember back to that other video too, some of the section didn't have grass at all. In this section where it's kind of going up the hill, I'm not gonna dig back any more of that. I'm just gonna push this over and just overlap. All right, that's it. Looking good. I'm happy with the progress. Got that section all finished there. So that's how it goes day by day, guys. Like I said, I'm happy with the progress that I made today. But more important than the progress is just enjoying the whole process. I said it before, but I love it. I've done this food forest before, the six-year-old one. And looking back at that, the, the little things I did, you know, the daily investments, that's really what made it all worth it. If, I just, if someone planted that food for us and I came here and just got to eat from it, I know that the food wouldn't taste as good. It wouldn't taste as good as if I planted it myself. Planting it yourself, uh, watching those plants grow and just aiding them and you know, pruning them every year, taking care of them and just being a good steward, that's what makes the fruit taste good. That's what makes it all worth it. So that's why I want to bring you guys these videos to show you, to encourage you to get out there, to do it. Because these investments, these are what make all the difference in the future. I wanted to tell you guys that on how the chickens are doing. They're all doing great. Last time you guys probably saw them, those two right there, the Rhode Island Reds, Savannah and that's Forest there, they were molting, losing all their feathers. But they got them all back now, and you can see how beautiful they look, all ready for winter. But we've got Sapphire, the black one, Australope right there, she's still losing some of her feathers at her head. So if you don't know what the molting process is with chickens, I've got a video on that. And there's Percy, she's the queen. Sorry for that angle right there, but I love Percy, girl. She's so sweet, but all these chickens are great and I'll be adding a few, few more chickens this year. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. But I don't want them digging up too much in here now that I just put the wood chips down, but I'm pretty positive the ground's gonna freeze or the wood chips will freeze relatively soon so I shouldn't have an issue. So important guys though, so, so important. Thanks for reminding me chickens. You never wanna mix this. Never mix the soil with the wood chips. The wood chips are simply a mulch. That's gotta be one of the most important things. Well, that's today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I'm a mess now from taking that picture sitting with Tuck. I had so much fun doing it though and bringing you guys along for it. I wanted to get more done today, but I didn't. That's just how it happens. Tomorrow's another day, it's supposed to be beautiful. I hope to bring you guys along for that too. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. You know we'll be back real soon. See you in the next one.